Let's go back to the, uh, the head of the African Union meeting with Russia's president, uh, Vladimir Putin, about uh, the global food crisis. Uh, joining us now live from Washington, D.C., Robin Sanders. She served as U.S. ambassador to Nigeria, Congo, and the Economic Community of West African States. She's also former director for Africa at the U.S. National Security Council. Ambassador, good to have you with us. Uh, Maki Sal said that he was leaving Russia happy and reassured by his exchanges with President Putin. What sort of reassurances could President Putin have given him? Well, I mean, we can only speculate uh, what that might be. Uh, the the real test will be in action that, that's taken on the ground. So if he had a comfortable conversation with him where he got assurances that he would take into consideration unblocking the food that was stuck at the port in Odessa, uh, maybe that's what makes him feel comfortable. But in the, the bottom line is whether or not that action will be taken on the ground. Uh, I think as you, you know, uh, uh, the continent gets about 44 percent of its wheat from from Russia over the last four or five years. And what are we to make of President Putin's claim uh, that uh, that Moscow is not preventing grain exports from Ukraine and accusations uh, uh, to that uh, uh, old bluster by the West? Well, I think the reality is 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 there for everyone to see. I mean, the ships are blocked out of leaving Odessa. There is a world food security crisis. Uh, Africa is the most affected by that. So the facts and the reality contradict completely uh, his vision of you know where things stand, and also overall his vision of what the global security environment looks like. Uh, there's definitely a disconnect there. Unfortunately, it's a disconnect that's hurting millions of people around the world, not only those in Ukraine, uh, but those elsewhere, like in Africa, as uh, the president of the African Union have underscored. Maki Sol asked President Putin to become aware that our countries, i.e. African nations, are victims of, of the conflict too. Um, Putin said that, that he was on Africa's side. Is he to be believed? Again, I think for me and anybody that has a practical mindset on policy, it will be what actually happens on the ground. Right now, they've had a great diplomatic conversation, it appears. Uh, the president of Senegal, and who's also, of course, the, uh, the head of the African Union, uh, is pleased with the conversation he had. The bottom line is what will happen on the ground. Uh, if we're having the same conversation next week, then uh, it was just really a diplomatic showmanship on the part of Putin, and nothing has been done on the ground. If we see movement on the ground, if we see the ships moving, if we see the food security situation being addressed by Russia, then that's a different issue. But right now, it's all diplomatic bluster until we see action on the ground that changes the, the, dyna the how, dynamic. How do you think uh, Washington... There... Sorry, I'm sorry to interrupt you. How do you think Washington will, will interpret uh, uh, this meeting? It sees the head of the African Union going there and then reporting that he had a, a, a good... Uh, meeting with, with, with President Putin. I mean, it's indicative, isn't it, of the fact that, that on ev not everyone um, shares the same view of Russia uh, that, that the U.S. And, and European nations have. I think I would separate those two things completely. I think there's a reality here. There, you know, it's called the really the three Fs. It's food security, it's fuel, and it's fertilizer. Those three things are in jeopardy in addition to the humanitarian crisis that's going on uh, in Ukraine and in Russia. And so I think that from a, a sectoral perspective, a policy perspective on how you address food security, I don't think the U.S. government is going to stand in the way of getting uh, any kind of resolution on the food security shortages uh, uh, out there. Um, I do think that uh, it's important to keep in mind and separate these things because they are different. They have different goals and objectives. And if we can unblock the food, that's a big plus for the world, not just, uh, not just the African continent. Russia supplies about 12 percent of the entire world's uh, wheat supply. So it would impact everybody if that food is released. Really good to talk to you, Ambassador. Many thanks indeed for being with us. Thank you. Uh, that's Robin Sanders then in Washington, D.C. Well